Okay. So, I mean, that question is fraught with a lot of worries. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to go back, but I have been fully vaccinated. I do believe we would have to all be wearing masks. She keeps talking. Heidi talked about the big room, so I don't know which room she's referring to. I was assuming she meant the basement room where we could keep the mm -hmm. doors to the garden. Yeah, which would, that would be, be we would be highly ventilated. No, the, it's not that. Not the room with the garden. The really large room when you first go down to the basement. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't even know if the, how the windows work in there. I've never tried. Well, and I'll look I, into it. I would prefer being in a room with windows that we could open for sure. Me too. All right. Well. All right. We don't have to talk about that anymore. Could I ask a question? Sure, Katie. Would, would there be a chance of having a virtual component during the live experience? Oh, that's great. Yeah. That is under discussion. Whether or not that could happen is a whole nother thing, Katie. Okay. And the thing with virtual is I would have to be stationary. And I will mm -hmm. be honest with you, when I teach in person, I move around a lot. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Whether that would be feasible, I, I don't know. The library would have to probably hire a, a videographer, and I'm not sure how amenable they would be to doing that. So first of all, I want to welcome everyone. And Lisa, I believe you're someone new. Um, usually when we have a new person attending, we go around to do quick introductions, but because Heidi did that straw poll about whether or not we wanted to be in person, if you will forgive me, Lisa, we're going to skip that today, but I do want to give you uh, an individual welcome to our class, and I hope that you enjoy yourself today. Thank you. Appreciate that. You are so welcome. Our class is called Art at Home because obviously we are for the most part stuck at home because of COVID-19. Mega thanks to the Hoboken Public Library for allowing us to have these Zoom classes. They are perfect for this period of time when we are really not forced, but we are advised to stay in our living space and Art is such a terrific way to pass the time indoors in, confined, in a confined area. So as always, we are going to start by looking at an artist's work. We're going to discuss her work or his work. Today it's a her. Her work is hopefully going to inspire us to do our own work. After we look at the artist's work, I'm going to tell you the materials that you need. I'll give you a minute or two to gather up all the things that you want to use. Then I'll do a quick demo of what you can make. And then the rest of the class will be your time to make what you would like. It is March still. March is Women's History Month in this country. The month is dedicated to the women who have done so much to make this country what it is today. And in fact, one might argue we are the people who have significantly contributed to making this country the great country it is today. Our artist for today, I mentioned this before we started recording, is an artist that I regret I know little about. She has been on the art scene, however, for many, many years. Her name is Howard Dina Pindell. I'm gonna type her name in the chat box for everyone. So give me a second to do that. Howardina Pindell was born April 4th, 1943 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. She is still alive. She was educated at Boston University at the School of Fine and Applied Arts. She started in 1965. She received 
oh, sorry, she received her BFA in 1965. She got her MFA at Yale School of Art and Architecture in 1967. She is most famous as a painter and a collage artist. She also does video art and mixed media. She is a Guggenheim Fellowship Award winner. She is most famous, as I mentioned, as a painter and mixed media artist. And her work really is a lot about texture, color, and the process of making art. She is a person of mixed racial heritage. And often her work is about the intersection of feminism and race. You don't always see it visually in her work because she is an abstract, primarily an abstract artist. There was a wonderful article in the New York Times magazine section. I, I forget, I don't think it was last weekend, but at least two weekends ago about black abstract expressionist artists. They are starting to become noticed again um they had been kind of shoved aside for a while because representational black artists seem to be more popular and more in the forefront at the moment in the new york art scene so i'm delighted to say that she is i don't know if i want to say being rediscovered but she is coming to the forefront in the major New York art scene right now. I'm so excited personally too because there's a show that has just opened at the New Museum in New York City in which she, some of her work is being exhibited. It is called Grief and Grievance and I am going, so I'm personally excited about that, I'm going this coming Saturday to see that show and I'll let you know how it is. So she was born in Philadelphia. She went to Philadelphia High School. And from a very young age, she demonstrated promise in figurative art. Um, she started going to the Philadelphia College of Art and the Tyler School of Art, both great schools, and received her BFA from Boston University, as I mentioned. She got her MFA at Yale. She also received an honorary doctorate from Massachusetts College of Art and Design and Parsons in New York City. So she worked for most of her life at MoMA. And here's Helen. Hi, Helen. Welcome. Hi. And good morning. Good morning. How are you? All right. Good, thank you for coming. So we're just starting, Helen, talking about our artist of focus for today. Her name's Howardina Pindell. Mm -hmm. And while she was at MoMA, she worked, Howardina worked as a curator in the Department of Prints and Illustrated Books. And she worked there for 12 years. And finally, she was an assistant for a long time and finally became an associate curator. In 1972, she co-founded a gallery called Air Gallery, A period, I period, R Gallery, which stands for Artists in Residence. And she co-founded the gallery with a group of other female artists, 20 artists co-founders. It was really one of the first feminist galleries in New York. It was an attempt to get underrepresented female artists into the gallery space in a, um, a gallery where they could curate their own shows so that they could express themselves in their own way instead of putting their work into galleries that were primarily run by men and having their work misinterpreted or misunderstood by men. So the gallery allowed women artists the freedom to take risks with their own work. And I am proud to myself be a member of a similar kind of gallery at the moment called Sierra's Gallery. 
they, they're actually in the same building, although I think Air Gallery has moved. You could look it up. I'll put in the chat box A I R Gallery and Cirrus Gallery are two feminist galleries in NYC. So they used to be in the same building on West 27th Street, but I, if I'm remembering correctly, I think Air Gallery has moved elsewhere. All right, enough said about her life at this point, I may add a bit more additional information in a minute. Let's start looking at her work. She loved doing circles and dots, and I'm gonna explain why. When we look at one of her pictures, and again, for my newbies in the class, I like sharing the artist's work, not for you to copy. I don't want you to copy the artist's work, but I want you to be informed of their work so that it will inspire you in what you are about to create today. Everybody able to see it? If a couple of people could just give me a thumbs up. Unfortunately, her work just gets really pixelated. All right, so I'm getting some head nods and some thumbs up. This is one of her collage pieces, which she's really, really famous for. She literally took a hole punch and would punch out thousands of circles of paper. She liked using common everyday papers like tag board or oak tag, things like that. And the image of the circle, one of her inspirations or ideas for the concept of the circle came from what she saw in the late 1940s or early 1950s, which was circular artworks from a root beer bottle that she saw while she was with her parents in Ohio. The bottom of the root beer mug had a big red circle on it, a mark once placed on dishes and silverware used to serve people of color in the South. And I found that so interesting because even though her work is not overtly political, it's always referential, it refers back to these ideas of race and alienation and difference. Much of her work comes from this whole concept or idea of difference. Even though it visually presents itself as being about minimalism or even plantalism, those of you who are my more veteran students may remember when we talked about the pointillist artist in France who created paintings just by using dots. All right, well, this picture is difficult to look at, but it's because of the pixelation, but does anybody have anything they want to say about it? It looks like an animal print. Okay, like an animal's walked across it, that kind of print? No, like skin, like. Oh, like animal skin. Okay, cool, Margot. She often was inspired by African prints. So there may be a reference to that in this piece. Margot, I don't know. It almost to me looks like a terrain. Okay. Like from far away, it's this neutral, it could be, it could be, um, I guess, sand with rocks or something like that. Like, I, I see land for some reason, but I see animal skin too. That's really awesome, Aunt Margot. I, um, 
I could look at this for hours and interpret it, I'm sure. <laughs> but I love how she sews canvas together and just makes the textures that just pull you in and it's, it's mesmerizing. All right. Yeah, she does love texture. And it does feel very much like terrain or a rock surface. So another, another interesting observation. That was Lauren, right? Welcome, Lauren. Yes, thank you. Glad you could make it. All right, let's look at another piece. Certainly the colors in this have a feeling of earth, don't they? And it was a collage, so the textural effect is greatly, I guess, enhanced could be the word, because it is a collage. All right, here comes the next. So this is a particular point in her career when she stopped using stretched canvas and stopped presenting framed pieces of paper works and started pinning loose canvas to the wall. Again, you can see she's collaged tiny circles I personally love this piece because the spiral for me is one of the most beautiful shapes on earth. Agree, agree. And the yellow is so exciting, joyful even. It certainly is cheerful feeling. I love the raggedy edges in this one. I like some of the dots are very tiny. I'm not sure what the medium is. I'm not sure either, but I am guessing on this one that the spiral is painted on canvas. The dots are probably made from mixed media and then glued to the canvas. So it could be anything from paper to bits of beads and shell. She used all different kinds of media. Sometimes she used glitter. I wish we were standing in front of this so that we could actually determine what it was made from. She also used dried bits of acrylic paint and attached them to her canvas. So I can't really answer that question. But it's kind of fun to guess also. There's a few spirals in there. Is that correct? Yes. Yep, there's certainly one here. It looks like there's some smaller ones next to it. This could be a tiny one over here. This may be another one here. Maybe another one over here. So spirals within the whole big spiral overlapping each other. Why not? I have never seen her work in person. That's why I'm so excited about going in to see the show on Saturday. I will take pictures if I'm allowed, everybody, and share with you in the next class. Okay, we're gonna look at one or two more. Always so difficult for me to choose. This one's very colorful. I think you're gonna like it.
So again, collage work, I think you can see in this the hundreds and thousands of circles. She also has some rectangular strips worked in there. Layer upon layer of circle. I don't know if those of you who are on my email list, I don't know if you read the bio that I sent you, but I love that part where her therapist or psychiatrist told her at one point that she had to stop with the circles as she was too obsessive about them. Yes, at the advice of her doctor, not her therapist, her doctor, Uh, she she was he told her to stop doing the circles. So Pindle bought a television for her studio to encourage her from working long hours on her dot works. And she became interested in the artificial light from her television monitor and began to write out small nu numerals on acetate, which is a whole nother obsession that she got into. But you can see from this that she was incredibly compulsive about all these little circles. Any thoughts on this? I almost looks like weaving. <laughs> it looks I like weaving. About... Those of you who did the work weaving workshop on Saturday, yeah. I like how she breaks out of the perimeter of the edge. Yes. And that is a note to all of you artists. You do not have to be restricted by the edges of your piece. Bust out. Does this follow under following in the lines? Inside you the do lines. not have to call her inside the lines. Absolutely not. You know, Liz, this also reminds me of those optical illusions that used to be so popular. You stare yes. at a picture and then suddenly the, the orange image in the background emerges and it's Vikings or something. I don't know. Right. It tends to vibrate, doesn't it? It does. It does. So the very intense orange against the cooler blue very beautiful. But she, th this was probably intentional because she did become, and maybe it was during that period when she worked by the light of the TV, she became very involved with the effects of light and dark and the glow of light. So great observations. All right, let's look at one more. This one's very different. She was involved in a very serious accident and spent a long time going through recovery, physical and emotional, psychological recovery. And she started at that point incorporating words into her work. Unfortunately, I struggled to find an image that I could show you in which you could actually read the words. But I love this piece because it's very difficult to make words work within an abstract piece. And I, I think that she's done it so beautifully in this piece. The balance between the script and the abstract painting seems to work really well for me. 
And I so love this yellow shape here and how there's kind of this yellow shooting out from the middle of this egg shape here. And then this fantastic blood red fringe around here. I mean, this, this could be referring to the injury she sustained. It's kind of hard to know without being able to see the words. But there are so many different levels to her work. I Nowhere have I found her referred to as a conceptual artist, but I think that she could fit into that category as well because of the many philosophical and intellectual levels of her work. I'm going to just read this one little paragraph about after her accident, because I think it's so interesting. In 1979, Pindell was in a traumatic car accident from which she suffered severe memory loss. It was at this point, and I couldn't find any examples of these pieces, so I want you fo folks to look for them, search for them. It was at this point, it says my internet connection is unstable. You can all see me, right? Yes? Yes. Okay. It was at this point that her work became much more autobiographical, in part as an effort to help herself heal. Her painting autobi autobiography, which was part of an eight painting series on her recovery, used Pindell's own body as the focal point. For this piece, she cut and sewed a traced outline of herself onto a large piece of canvas as part of a complex collage. I want to see that piece. So I'm giving you guys a homework assignment. If you can find that and share it with us, I would be thrilled. She also used old travel postcards during this period of her work because the postcards helped to spark her memory of her life prior to the accident and her memory loss. All right, any last minute thoughts about this particular painting? It is so different from all the others we've looked at. Is it titled, Liz? I could not find the title, no. I mean, I'm sure it has a title. She did title her work, but I do not know the title for this. Thank you. Frequently, when you look for images on Google search, the title is not available. I love the colors. Yeah, I do too. I, this blood red, I don't know, it's so powerful, right? Blood or wine red, I don't know why I keep referring it to blood red. That, that's what it makes me think of. I, I think that the colors inside that oval and then the background, which is, is it as, uh, like those colors, but much less defined and, and softer. It, it's just exquisite yeah. how, how, how with these colors, she's putting things together and and yeah, it's an amazing painting to me. I, I don't know how to interpret things, but it, it, that, uh, it's almost like an eye in the middle that's all fractured. You know. Well, you're interpreting beautifully, Robin. <laughs> Thanks. I, 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 is this one of all the ones she's done, it speaks to me uh, more deeply. It feels like a much deeper, from a much deeper place somehow. Wonderful. Which I imagine it was, having been gone through a trauma like she did. Yes. Yeah. It's beautiful, the color, the red. Yeah. <laughs> it is, the colors are extraordinary. I, I just wanted to say about the, the other paintings, you know, that 
that yellow one with the um, circles and spirals, it felt like something to wear. Yes. It and felt like a big skirt. Again, she, think... was, she was influenced by African fabric. Yeah. Uh, it does mention several times, because she worked at MoMA, she saw a great deal of, of things that inspired her in her day job. And quite frequently, there were African sculpture that were available for her to look at, and also fabric. So she loved the work exhibited at MoMA and at the Brooklyn Museum of Art and was greatly inspired by those things. And it's interesting that you see an eye here. For me, this is an egg, definitely an egg. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right. Well, I think it's time for us now to have a little fun. I am gonna tell you the materials now that you will need in order to start creating on your own today. You can go in two directions when you're creating your own work today. And I neglected to think of this when I sent out the email to folks on the e email list. And as always, anyone who are not on my email list you can give it to me in the chat box. Just send it to me, don't send it to everyone. And I will be very happy to add you to the list because what I do is send out the list with the materials that you'll need prior to the class so that you'll be ready to go. But in case you didn't have time to read the email or in case you are not on my email list here, are the two directions that you can go in today and the materials that you'll need. You can either do collage or, and we can thank Susan Monda for this, or we can do crayon or oil pastel resist today. When I do the demonstration today, I am only going to show you how to do oil pastel resist. So here are the materials you need. If you are doing collage, you need a variety of different papers and photographs, magazine papers, newspaper, any kind of scrap papers that you might have around wherever you are living. You'll need a glue stick, you'll need scissors, and you'll need a piece of background paper. If you are lucky enough to have a hole punch, and you like the fact that uh, Howard Dina punched holes out of paper and you wanna go in that direction, get your hole punch too. If you are going to do circles, I recommend you get circular objects of different sizes. You can start tracing circles on your papers to cut out. That'll make it so easy for you. Like you can get old plastic containers, you can get lids, tops to things, anything circular that you may have laying around your home. If you're going to do the oil pastel slash crayon resist, get yourself a box of crayons or a bunch of oil pastels. You'll need watercolor paint or acrylic paint. You'll need water, a brush, and paper to work on. I think that covers everything. Oh, and you may need a palette. If you're using paint in a tube, you're gonna need a palette and paper towels if you're painting. So any questions? I'm gonna put in the chat box the materials that you'll need. I'm gonna give everybody a couple minutes and then I'm gonna begin working on my oil pastel you can choose to watch me, or if you're one of my more long-term students and you think you know what you're gonna do, you can just begin. In a few minutes though, I'm gonna give you some suggestions and tips and ideas. So if you wanna wait until I do that, that's cool too. Right now I'm typing in the collage materials that you'll need.
Liz, for the yes. uh, for the oil pastel, um, what what kind of paper is best to use for that? Something heavy. Okay. Heavy. If you're lucky enough to have watercolor paper, that's probably the best. Or okay. a heavyweight drawing paper should work. That's what I'm using today. Okay. And thanks, Susan Monda, because she did a crayon resist last week and reminded me that we haven't done it in a while, and I got really excited. <laughs> I love crayon resist. Let's see what we're so one more minute, and we're gonna. I'm gonna give you some tips, and then we're gonna get started. All right, so with abstraction, remember you have a lot of choices to make. So it's helpful to start with one of the basic art elements. You might want to focus on color, you might want to focus on texture, or line or shape. But I would start out by choosing one thing as your area of focus and then work from there. Today, I'm gonna think about shape. And in honor of Howard Dina Pindell, I am too am gonna think about circles. I love circles a lot. I'm not gonna be tracing circles, but again, I'm gonna recommend to you that you could take any circular object that you have around you, use circles of different sizes, start thinking about where you want the focal point of your composition to be. Do you want it to be in the center of your paper? Do you want it to be off to one corner of your paper? Is it going to be at the bottom in the middle or at the bottom off center? Is it going to be in the middle but off to one side? Start thinking about that. And if you're a little unsure of what direction you want to go in, I would start first lightly in pencil so that you can erase. And then if like me, you're doing crayon resist, you can go over the pencil lines in crayon or oil pastel. All right, here we go. I have to do my work flat work table. 
you will not be able to see what I'm doing, but periodically I'm going to stop and put it up on my easel so you can see what I've accomplished. But when I'm working with the oil pastels, and you're gonna to have to do this too, you're going to wanna to bear down hard on the surface of the paper with your crayon or oil pastel. And that's very difficult for me to do, standing up at the easel. I have to have my work flat on my tabletop. So I'm gonna show you as I go. Every few minutes, I'll put it back on the easel so that you can see what I've accomplished. I'm starting with circles. I like to make my composition a little bit off kilter. I find artwork where the composition is off center much more interesting to look at. I do not like symmetry, but that's the personal choice. And a word about color. Color can be overwhelming. So think about our color wheel, the three primaries, red, yellow, and blue. Think about the colors that are their complements, opposite them on the color wheel. Opposite to blue is orange, opposite to red is green, opposite to yellow is violet. You might want to limit your palette to one primary and its opposite, or two primaries and their opposites. Start thinking about those decisions even as early as now, as you start laying down your composition. If you can start making those decisions right from the beginning, it may help you as things get more complicated, further along for you. I'm an earth tone person, so I think I'm gonna stick with an earthier palette with this piece. It's what I love the most. There's nothing wrong with staying with things that feel comfortable for you. You never know what's gonna evolve from that. A lot of people think doing what's comfortable is just, cheating in a way, but I don't agree. I find that if I start out with things that I like, I frequently come up with innovative ideas. Nothing wrong with seeking your comfort level and seeing where it goes. And another reminder, every piece of artwork you do isn't going to be a Picasso. or a Howardina Pindell, for that matter. I am putting my oil pastel down thickly. I'm not coloring the entire circle in. After I finish my drawing with the oil pastel, I'm going to be painting over the entire drawing with the watercolor paint. So I don't want to cover the whole piece of paper with oil pastel because, well, you're going to see. It won't work if I do that. That's the short, sweet explanation of that. But where I do have the oil pastel, I want it to be heavy and thick. And my circles aren't perfect circles. Do I care? No. Those of you who are doing collage, the same tips really apply. 
you might want to make color your main theme for your collage. When you look at images that you're cutting out, think about the colors that they are rather than what the objects are that you're cutting out. Maybe you'll find a yellow butterfly. Don't cut out the entire butterfly. Maybe just cut out a piece of yellow that you see within the wing of the butterfly and work with that. It will help you to organize your composition if you find a theme. It could be color, it could be shape. My organizing theme for what I'm making is shape. Guys, as always, if you have any questions, please unmute and ask. I do appreciate that you're staying muted while working. Many artists need quiet in order to create. A few folks just arrived late. Welcome. Thank you for coming. We love having you whenever you get here. Not even gonna put it on my easel at this point. I'm tipping up my drawing so you can see how thick and dark I'm laying on the oil pastel. If you don't have oil pastel, simple Crayola crayons work beautifully. Peel off the paper and if the crayons break, don't worry about it. It's all good. I'm varying the size of my circles. Oh, and my pastel just broke. Another thing, if you're doing oil pastel or crayon, you can use white on the white paper. It's, it's kind of magic because when you paint over it with your watercolors or acrylic, you will see the white lines. I probably will use some white so you can see how that works. My circles are really more ovals, but that's no surprise. I love drawing egg shapes. One of my favorite things to do. So did Howardina. That last piece we saw definitely had ovals. Thank <sighs> you. 
So I'm making a little progress. As always, you may not finish what you're making in this class. That's fine. You can always send me JPEGs of your work. For those of you who don't know, here's my email address. I love giving advice and suggestions. Let me JPEG. We will have time to share at the end, as always. Somebody took my brown oil pastel. Who took it? <laughs> <laughs> ah, here it is. So, Liz? Yes. I um I just wanted to uh, quickly show you I found a uh, a very uh, different um, Pallinina bell that turned in. I don't know if you've seen it. But it's you're you're breaking up. I can't hear you. Was that Jane? It is. Yeah. So I just wanted to show you this. Uh, this. Piece by Howard Dino. Did you find that cell portrait stitched to the canvas? No, but I didn't look at a lot. Um, oh, wow, that looks different. Yeah, it's just so interesting. I thought to share it. Beautiful. The, the light marks within the squares. Can, are they words? Mm, it looks like shape and texture. Textures. Yeah. Wow. It's called, it's called Flight Fields. I love the title, Flight Fields. Yeah. It reminds me of like being in an airplane and looking down at the ground, how the colored feels, how the different colored feels that you can see. Yeah. And it's also a contrast because it's, there's very little circular um, structure. Right, it's not circular at all. Yeah. Very beautiful, thank you. So you have a book of her work. No, I was uh, looking on, I, I had my iPad. I was just looking. To oh, it's on your iPad. Yeah. Nice. This looks like it's at the map. How is everyone doing? Anybody have any questions? 
Yeah, I'm doing stuff in the uh, crayon, um, and I don't understand how the watercolor is going to relate to this. So I feel like I'm painting a background. Is I'm going to show right now. Perfect timing, Robin. Okay. I just Thank you. kind of put the spotlight back on me. I am not done with the crayon part of my drawing, but. I do want to show you the next step in the process. So I'm going to put this back on the easel. That was the perfect question at the perfect time, Robin. Thank you. So at this stage, I'm going to pretend that my drawing is finished. Maybe it is. I don't know. Can I think everyone can see the easel now. And I like to take, at this point, a big soft brush. And I'm going to make it pretty wet. I'm going to stick with my earth tone family colors. I might change later, but I don't know. I'm, I'm in a reddish brown mood today. And here's what you do next if you're doing crayon or oil pastel resist. You literally paint right over your drawing. Wherever you have the crayon, guess what? The paint will not stick. That's why it's called resist. So this is exactly the same technique as batik. Water or liquid and wax will not mix. Crayons and oil pastel are an oil-based, a wax-based material. And you can paint right over them and the lines will continue or the lines will resist the paint and the lines will be very strong and very visible through the paint. Any questions? So ominous silence. Did that help, Robin? Yes, uh, it did. Uh, it seems like that what we put on in the background is going to be dominant. Uh, you, would you paint more heavily with your watercolor or is it more just to blend them or put it, give a background to it? It depends on what you want to achieve in the finished product. You can leave the paint very thin, like I have it now. Okay. Or you can keep adding more layers of paint as you go. Okay. It depends on what direction the painting takes you in. Okay, great. Thank right? You. Yes, thank you. So you, you see how dark my lines are at the moment. They're really dominating my composition. That was my intent when I started. I want the lines to really stand out. Is it better to use watercolor or watered down acrylic or it makes no difference? If you use the watered down acrylic, your paint color will definitely be stronger. Okay but they should both work well. I would start with very watered down acrylic and as that dries, I would add, you know, if you want a dark intense background, I would start using less water and more paint as you go. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. So 
I'm taking the white now, which I didn't have time to do before. I'm not pressing as hard with the white. Well, first of all, because I'm on the easel, but second of all, because I want to see what happens. I love to experiment. Remember, as always, step back from time to time. Look at your work from a distance to see how it's evolving. It's very hard to be up close next to your work all the time. You lose perspective. Step back. See what you like. See what works, what doesn't work. Come back and change. Things aren't going well, could just be you're having a bad day. It's all good. Don't beat yourself up. I found sometimes when things aren't going well, it just means I should do the most outrageous thing I can think of. <laughs> really let my hair down and do something completely unplanned. And sometimes that works. Or it could mean, yeah, start all over again. This is not working. You could try both. Go rogue, see how that works. If it doesn't, start all over again. Don't worry about finishing. I think I've said this a million times. It's not the end product, it's the process. The more you do, the more you learn. The more you learn, the more skillful you become. And the less of that horrible self-chat you're going to put yourself through. Although, trust me, artists can work for 99 years and still have self-doubt. That's part of the process, too. So 
with a crayon resist though, it's best if you do all of your drawing first, do the painting last. I love your white, Liz. Yeah, so the fun. white lines are so fun. So beautiful. Try it. Do you, are you doing the crayon resist? Um, not that I thought I will, but I will try it. If you don't want it in the piece you're working on now, just grab a piece of scrap paper and test it out. I have no idea what this is. I just know what my my I'm I'm gonna go off screen for a minute. I need more paper towel. I'll be right back. We still have about half an hour to just enjoy ourselves. So keep going, everybody. Oops. Everybody good? Yep. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush now. I think I'm going to hit this picture with some greens. Let's see what happens. Interesting.
using a kind of yellowy grass green. I like what it's doing. It's giving a warmer feel to my piece. No, no, no. The other thing with abstract, we started talking about this last week. You have the ability to turn your piece in different directions and see how it looks. You may find that you started in one direction, but you like it going in another direction, and that's fine. If I like mine better horizontally than I do vertically. Let's see how it looks this way. Hello. Liz. Yes. Who is that? Helen? What's up? Mm -hmm. uh, How are you doing? I'm going to ask you. All right. <laughs> um, the stuff that they put on the inside the supply, what's that for? The red dress? The red what? It was like a, a dress or something. What's that for? When I went to get the I'm not quite sure what what you're talking about. And there was like a rope. Inside. You mean in my painting? Yes. In my painting? I just made a lot of ovals and then I painted over them with red paint. No, so, I mean, when the supplies that we got, um, there was like a rope inside with the yarn. Yeah, I don't know. For this class, you just needed crayons and paint and paper. Oh, no, for the one day for the weaving class, Saturday. Oh, for the weaving, you needed cardboard, yarn. Yeah, there was like a, a, a rope there too. What, what's the rope for? Oh, twine or string. 
Oh, okay. And how that's, about the red dress? Something like that, red? I mean, red? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know what I don't know what that's referring to. But you need some kind of string to warp up the loom. But the weaving uh -huh. that you showed me in that picture it looked like you did it. You did a great job. Oh, okay. Thank you. So the materials that you used worked out well for you. Whatever you used worked. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'm just adding more layers of color now. I think I would have done more drawing, but that's okay. At least I got to demonstrate for you the process. And I'm having fun. I hope you all are too. Yes, it is. I just didn't understand what we were doing. another clip. If you're using watercolor too, if your paper is getting soaked, get yourself a hair dryer if you have one. Or you might want to stop for a minute or two to let the paper dry out a little bit.
So I'm getting a little darker now because I feel getting a little darker with my paint because the lines I did with oil pastel are a little heavy at this point. And they're dominating my composition. So by adding more dark paint, I'm softening, I'm attempting to soften. The heavy outlines. Starting to work. You can also, once the paint is dry, you can add more crayon and oil pastel. And do a whole nother layer of paint. So about 10 more minutes, a little over 10 minutes, then we're going to stop and share and talk about next week's artist and lesson. Don't panic, you don't have to finish. We've also started having an informal sharing time. If you get to class at a quarter of, at 9.45, we've had an informal sharing group at that time. You could come early. So if you're further along in your work next week and you wanna share then, you can.
to mute, please. Don't forget to mute. Unless you have a question. Everybody good? Nothing in the chat box.
Oh, just two minutes till sharing. I didn't realize there's something in the chat box. All right. to show my whole piece, but that's okay. It's a work in progress. Would anyone like to share? And before we start sharing, let me look up who our next artist is. I forgot to do that. We have one more Wednesday in March, I believe. The 31st, I think. Yes. Okay, our next artist is an American artist, Aaliyah Chapin. Another, this artist is brand new to me. And she is a portrait artist, so we are going to revisit those of you who are my veteran students. We're going to revisit doing portrait work. Typing her name in the box for everyone. Aaliyah. Chapin. Completely new to me. Is 
said Aaliyah or B. Is that Helen? Helen, are you asking a question? Yeah, it's Aaliyah. The name is Aaliyah. Yes, her name is Aaliyah Chapin, A L E A H C H A P I N. I'll send you pictures of her work and her name. Don't worry, like I usually okay, do. Thank okay. You. All right, thank you. You're welcome. So are we so in love with working? Katie, do you want to share? Hi, I'm not sure I really did the assignment. So That's I'm all right. With what whatever, I have. But, whatever spirit um, moved you. Um, I used um, markers on paper. Wow. And I used um, teardrop shapes and was Love working it. on a, a weeping willow tree because I think the teardrop shapes with the weeping willow works beautifully. It works so. What are you thinking about for the background? You know, I have no idea. I'm sort of. I don't. I don't know that I want to complete the tree. I don't know where it's going to go from here. I would but, love to see you continue working with the teardrop shape. Make it kind of like a mosaic. Right. But right. in different colors in the background so that right. the tree it would pops be. Out. Yeah. Right. Probably go with, you know, warmer tones than the, you know, the blues yeah, and the purples and the greens to make it pop. But it was fun to do. And awesome. these were supposed to be like roots of the trees, but I, I think they need more work as well. Well, they so look very good. root like. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. Yeah, so that's what I did. Wonderful, nice color Thank choices. You. Thank you. Suzanne is next. Yeah, nice Please. circles, spirals, nice composition. I like the way it flows from the top down to the corner. Have you tried turning it in different directions? Yeah, I initially started like this. I like that. That was my initial, and then just at the end, I switched it. What do you think is better? I'll, I'll, this, this. Turn it horizontal. This is, this is how, this was how I did it for the class. I think that's my favorite. Okay, good. That's the way I actually started. Where should I go now to play with it? Well, the focal point for me is perhaps the yellow area. Here. I want this to be brighter. Okay. And leading to this reddish spiral. This flow is very beautiful. The top here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then maybe a little bit of yellow in the bottom right. Um, on this side. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Anyone else? Esty? You're muted, babe. You got to unmute. Here. Not done. But uh, I'm not sure what I'm continuing. Is it collage yeah. and painting? Yeah, nice. String? No, it's a string, it's just string and paint over. But I, I will continue with something, I believe. I love it. Go quicker. <laughs> what? So that probably made it go quicker. Good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very, I'm a Speedy Gonzalez. I like it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do too much more. I thought maybe black dots, something like that. Black may be a tiny bit too heavy. Let's see. I'll try, I'll... Reference. Let's see. 
Okay. Thanks. All right. Bring it next week so we can see it. N Mika? No, Mika? Mika, do you want to share? How about Robin? Robin, would you like to share? Heather. Okay. I, this was all foreign to me. So I used the cray pots and, uh, and watercolor and I not used to doing abstracts. So I saw this picture of an owl. Yes. Uh, the colors aren't coming through, but I was looking at those textures and I, and I now, um, this is what I painted, but I, the technique that we're using isn't really, uh, I didn't really use the technique as I would now. Okay. Another painting, I would um, do a lot more in a light colored crepaw. And, and then I would just color it over with different colors. And, but this is a, it's kind of strange for me. I don't know what this is. <laughs> well, the, if it's new to you, keep experimenting. Have you painted on top of this yet or it's just the cray pot? No, I painted on top, but I did so much cray pot. Right. That there wasn't really room for the watercolor. For the to, paint. Yeah. So and, with this piece, I would suggest you emphasize some of your shapes with a darker cray pot. Okay. Well, let the drawing go back in and do a little bit more drawing. Okay. And then I would start a whole second piece with less cray pot and more paint. Well yes. done. Okay, thanks, Liz. I'll do it. I'll share. Heather. Okay. I'm still working on it, obviously. I'm still trying to find you. There you are. Oops, there's me. Whoa. Love the shape. Still working on the shape, the background. So there's a lot of glare on it. Tilt, tilt it forward oh. a little. Oh, okay. yeah. So it's collaged, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, old artwork. Uh-huh. I like this. Glad you found um, the use. <laughs> I cut the um my old artwork into circles, but now I got to deal with my background. Yeah, maybe maybe like a, a third piece of paper for the background. Right. What color? I don't know. <laughs> maybe some of that orange. Orange mm -hmm. or some of the grass green you might want to pick up. The yellow green. Okay. Nice. I wouldn't do any more of the textural thing though. Keep it flat. No. I will yeah. do. Maybe I'll get rid of some of the blue. Nice. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any of the hardies? Okay. Yeah, I'll share. <laughs> you ready? It's Mark. Yeah. Wow. See this? Yeah. Oh, I love the metallics. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of gold paint. <laughs> so keep going. It, it needs it needs more dots. Looks like a planet. It's wonderful. Fill up the space. Yep. Great beginning. I thought like a blue background. We'll see. Okay. Yeah, more dots. And you see the texture on the circles? I did some of the impossible. Yes, yes, yep. On purpose, not accidentally. <laughs> no, I didn't think it was accidental. I like it. More texture. More texture, more circles. Fill it up, baby. You All got right, it. your sister's chomping at the bit. Go ahead, Dina. <laughs> Dina, at Hang the on a second. I've got to take my uh, gotta get rid of the screen off. Yep. Hang 
Oh, and Heidi's already back. We got to hurry up. You did circles too. Good. <laughs> yeah, more, more, more. Sling my, my inner graphic designer. I cut these out of an Oprah magazine. It was different sky and water and sweaters and ads. Yes. Anyway, I'm going to put some more dots in. That's great that you use the colors, not the things. That was the that's last thing I heard, and I thought, I like that. That's a great idea. Yeah, that makes it surreal. I like that. All right, Jane's got her hand up. Where are you, Jane? Here, I, I seven ten circles, but there's a circular pattern emerging. Okay. Nice. Oops. Yeah, you need more. More, more, yeah. more. Close, so. I love the okay. texture of each square. You've gotten so much texture in such a small yes. area. I really I like, like that. I like the it's border, a, too. Are you creating an eye or something? No, actually, I was, I was thinking along the lines of uh, the, that were, were emerging out of, you know, 12 months of pandemic. So, oh, um, I okay. Like, you know, each of the squares is meant to be, like, right. a month, 13 months. And I love I'm that. not sure which way it's going to go, but, no, we'll see. No, I, I liked it this way. Okay. First way. First way looks best. Yeah. All right. And I like you. I like your squares and dots. Good, good design. Yeah, the textures are very oh, beautiful. Keep going. More, more, Thank more. You. Thank right. you. Lauren, Lauren, you're next, real fast. Okay. Um, I call. I, I'm not sure. I was going to be putting something. Noon, no. A collie in the middle. I I had done kind of a rough sketch, and this is my background. Wow. Um, so we've got some dots from my, my whole bunch. Uh, some I cut out from this really cool disco design. And I did some paint splatter as well as just, um, you know, swirls. I'm not sure where I'm going yet, but uh, Keep but yeah. Going. Yours too, I feel, needs a lot more. I agree. It feels just like a background rather than a finished piece. So I'm gonna figure out how to dots. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, beautiful. Dots. Have fun with it. All right, Heidi, did you need you. a last word? No, I'm just here to say goodbye. Have a good day. <laughs> and Have I do, I hate to say goodbye, but I will say goodbye. If you didn't get a chance to share, I hate not having more opportunity for sharing. So please do send me your JPEGs. Lisa, it was lovely having you. I hope you enjoyed. Please come back if you have the time. Well, I've, I've actually, I just got obsessed with doing negative spaces. So I'll definitely send you what I'm working on. We love negative space in this it's class. <laughs> really coming out cool. I'm going a totally different direction. So. It's in, I have to just rethink it. And it's, yeah, but I'm liking what's happening here. <laughs> All right, well, and Celine, you liked it, awesome. I'm so glad. Yes, very much, thank really you. Really happy you all had a good time, everyone. And thank you, Liz, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye. 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 Have a good week. Bye. 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 Ciao, ciao.